The first most commonly used modality as you can guess is glasses. However, if the glasses do not work anymore, we will consider surgery and the indication for the surgery depends on the extent of the visual handicap. Now, how will you decide if a patient needs a surgical management for his cataract or not? That is by getting to know if he is able to do his daily activities or not. If at all he is unable to do his daily activities, then he is a definite candidate for surgery. Now, let's look at the different surgeries. There are four types of surgeries. Number one, the ICCE also known as intracapsular cataract extraction, ECCE or extracapsular cataract extraction, phaco emulsification and small incision cataract surgery, ICCE, ECCE, phaco emulsification and small incision cataract surgery. Let's start off with the ICCE. Now, the, what is the main essence of the surgery is that the lens along with the capsule is removed as a whole that is you just remove the entire lens along with its capsule so it will obviously lead to a condition called aphakia that is absence of lens so for managing this you will have to prescribe very high power convex lenses again they have their own adverse effects we will see in a bit so, because of these very bad adverse effects of high power convex lenses, the only indication for ICCE is a subluxated or a dislocated cataract. That is when the lens is not present in its normal position, you will obviously have to remove it along with its capsule. So, only subluxation or dislocation is an indication for ICCE. Now, let's see what happens. Why do we not prefer ICCE? So we see this is the capsule and this is the lens along with the uh, uh, cataract. So the entire lens along with the capsule is removed leading to a condition called aphakia. <clears throat> see this is aphakia, there is nothing present after ICCE. Now we know that the refractive power of the eye is given by both the cornea and the lens. The cornea contributes 43 diopters and the lens gives 19 diopters. Now, in ICC, we have removed these 19 diopters. So, 19 diopters of power is lost from the eye. And this 43 diopters of lens of a cornea is not enough to focus the rays on the retina. So, there is no enough convergence power. So, the rays fall behind the retina. So, if you start correcting this with high power convex lenses, what happens? Let's look at this. Once you have placed this high power convex lens, the rays are no doubt focused on the retina. However, what happens is the property of highly convex lenses is that they cause magnification. If you remember the magnifying lenses which you used to use when you were a kid, they are all convex. All the magnifying lenses are convex. So, you are placing a high power convex lens in front of the eye. It will obviously magnify the image by 2%. For each diopter, for every diopter that you correct, 2% magnification is seen. Opposite to that, concave lens minimizes by 2%. So, when one eye is aphakic and you are giving this high power convex lens and there is magnification, suppose you are giving plus 5 diopters, then there is a 10% magnification of the image. That is a lot. Okay. So, that causes diplopia because one eye is normal and one eye has an image magnification of 10%. So, it causes confusion to the patient. Now, let us look at aphakia glasses. These are the aphakia glasses. This is how the aphakia glasses look. Now, some important features of aphakia that you will see when you examine a patient. The anterior chamber is deep. It is obvious because you have removed the lens, so the iris moves backwards. So the uh, anterior chamber deepens. See, the iris is moving backward, causing a deep anterior chamber. Now, a jet black, jet black pupil because there is no uh, lens over there. Then, iridodonis is nothing but excessive movement of 
iris and diplopia and jack in the box cotoma this can be asked as a question all of these can be asked but this is very important that is there is a sudden appearance and disappearance of the images when the patient has patient is looking at something like a jumping effect you know the toy the jack in the box suddenly jumps out and then goes in something like that and then there is a loss of visual field because the patient is wearing thick glasses only the central visual field is preserved all the periphery is not too good for him to use for proper vision and then there is something called the pin cushion defect okay so the features are deep anterior chamber jet black pupil iridodonosis diplopia jack in the box cotoma loss of visual field and pin cushion defect now this is what is a pin cushion defect this is normally what you see but a patient who is using a high power convex lens has this kind of vision it's very annoying right so to prevent all this we have devised another type of surgery called a extra capsular cataract extraction so what we do is here we remove the cataract however the capsule we do not remove the capsule it's left in situ an anterior capsulotomy is done that is an anterior part a piece from the anterior part of the cataract capsule of the lens is removed and the cataract is removed through this opening and an artificial lens is placed instead of the natural lens within the uh, capsule that is left in the posterior chamber so hence it is extra capsular cataract extraction with posterior chamber intraocular lens and unlike aphakia the patient is left with a vision of 6 18 it's a pretty good vision compared to the finger counting at 1 meter that is left in aphakic condition after icce the patient has 6 18 vision and he is in a condition called pseudophakia now let's look at this properly see here again we can see the cataract lens however the capsule as you're seeing is left behind with a small opening over here through this opening the cataractor's lens is removed and an intraocular lens is placed within the uh, leftover part of the capsule see this is how an iol is placed okay and the patient has 618 vision now let's quickly look at some types of iols the first most commonly used type is polymethyl methacrylate this is a very commonly asked question okay pmma is the type of material that you use okay it's a monofocal iol because it you it is used only for distance near vision you will have to correct using glasses because when there's no lens obviously there's no accommodation one feature is that it can transmit four times more than the normal light so the patient can perceive more of blue colored vision usually after cataract surgery okay now another type is multifocal you can see these multiple rings okay they help in both distance and near vision okay they have two different foci however they are highly expensive and have too many side effects and requires a lot of dexterity to place them properly during the surgery so it is used in only those patients who absolutely do not want to wear glasses okay the such people you are going to use multifocal IOLs. Now, for those with astigmatism, you can use something called the toric IOL. See these markings, these three dots, they indicate the axis of the lens. They, these are present at the haptic optic junction. And such a marker is used, see, for, to find out the uh, exact degrees of astigmatism the axis of the astigmatism and is is implanted accordingly now let's look at accommodative iol this is a moving iol it can move back and forth to provide a condition called pseudo accommodation much similar to the action of the normal lens this also moves forward and backward depending on the requirement of accommodation and they also can change their shape hello everyone this is dr sai suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at medico app now, thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below